hey me, it's okay to film a video and not immediately upload it. We can record a video, go to bed and deal with it tomorrow instead of staying up super late. Okay, cool, we have established that. What is this video about? Nothing in particular, I think it's just, um, you know, I've had a really bad few days and now I'm sort of at a point where I can make a video again and I've had all these ideas and because I've just not been in a good place to make videos, um, I've had to just keep adding to my to-do list of videos I want to eventually make. Um, so I think I'm just kind of feeling like, I want to say something, but I'm not ready to talk about anything specific, and so here I am filming a thing. Um, but some updates, so the, these mouth ulcers are finally calming down, so I have been able to go a couple days without putting the numbing gel on it. Still painful, <laughs> but I'm. it's not so painful that I'm completely distracted by it. Okay, other things. So last night, um, well, mostly this morning I slept better. Previous two mornings, um, my little brother woke up 5.30 or earlier and it just completely screwed up my sleep, especially like um, on Friday morning I hadn't really slept at all maybe or maybe just very light sleep um, so I was really messed up Friday was yesterday Wow um, at the time of filming this anyway upload it tomorrow it's okay <laughs> not to go too fast okay um, yeah no Friday um, yesterday because I didn't sleep I was really not in a good way um, and yeah, I had therapy. My last session with the current psychologist. Hey, look, we do have things to talk about. Last session with the, pre like, you know, psychologist I was seeing last year, and then she's off, and I don't know whether she'll ever come back. Seems like probably no. Um, yeah, and, um, like, I was in such a bad way. Like, she's been looking at my the little diary I've been keeping for her, which I think I'm not going to update anymore because... I don't know how the new psychologist wants to do stuff. But yeah, so the one that I've been seeing so far, keeping up to date with my diary and like since the crisis around Christmas, um, yeah, like I'm mostly have been doing better. I haven't had to call any hotlines, but then would I call a hotline or anything now that I know that they're not going to help me any more than, you know, Lifeline? Um, so that's the thing. But like, you know, I've had my ups and downs, but I think overall I've done a bit better. But yeah, by the time I got in to see her, I was just not in a good way. And I told her what's what's up. And um, yeah, like I guess with the holidays and so on, my parents were not as on the ball. Um, like, you know, I messaged them to say he's awake. And most days they'll sort him out in a timely manner, but I think they slept in and I, I was... It was so bad that I was actually going upstairs to wake them because, um, <laughs> yeah, I was really screwed up anyway. Um, by the time I saw the psychologist, sorry to keep going in circles, um, yeah, really bad, told her so, and she got kind of frustrated because if you don't sleep well, sleep is the fundamental, like it's a really fundamental need, and if you can't get enough sleep, it's really hard to do any of the work in terms of psychology. Um, yeah, so she sort of suggested I could do a sleep study because something that's also odd is um, clearly my sleep schedule is out of sync with the family and out of sync with most of normal society. Um, but apart from that, something odd that happens is I will, you know, not sleep well, I feel groggy in the morning, I'm really bad with mornings, um, and I will struggle for that first part of the day. But then as the day goes on, I sort of slowly start waking up and usually around about 6 p.m. This is regardless of whether or not I've slept or not. 6 p.m. ish seems to be when my brain is like, all right, we're awake now. And it doesn't seem to matter whether or not, like it, even if I'm really dead tired, uh, around 6 is when my brain will just be like, okay. And it's almost as if I've been like sleepwalking through the first part of the day in some kind of way because like I'm awake. And I'm aware in the usual way, but um, yeah, the the shift from that sort of low energy to the higher energy state, it's like waking up. Um, it's like how I imagine normal people wake up. Like, you know, they've been asleep, they wake up, they're ready to go for the day. Um, it's, it's weird like that. And I was explaining that to her and she's like, it sounds like, like you've got jet lag. 
um, which, yeah, uh, we, the problem with that is, like, I didn't get to go on any kind of holiday, did I? But, yeah, no. Um, and so she sort of suggested, like, you know, I could do a sleep study or something, because also my brain just doesn't wind down. Like, you know, once I hit that six o'clock and then, you know, go into the later part of the day when it's so hard to get anything done because, um, you know, we have a, like, you know, for dinner with my family, we all eat dinner together. So that's like a set thing I have to do at a certain time. And then, um, you know, just, I can't make too much noise after a certain time because I don't want to wake people up, especially my little brother. Um, and yeah, it's just a hard time of day to get anything done. And I also have that awareness that I need to be getting ready for sleep right as my brain is getting into gear. Um, and so yeah, it, it is. And then like, I will often be hungry around midnight. Um, it's not really like my brain being stuck in a different time zone though, because I know if it gets to around 2am and I keep going, by that point, the headaches are starting and my brain is like, oh yeah, sleep, we should probably do that. Um, so there's that. And also I think there's a period of time, maybe around 10 o'clock-ish, where I start getting drowsy. But it's such a short window that it, like, you know, I, I can't get to sleep fast enough um, to catch it. And then I start waking up again. So there's like this sort of dip and then it's like awake again. And it's very easy for me to get distracted by even the smallest thing. And also at night when I'm trying to go to bed, that's when my brain is really looking for some kind of stimulation. And so that also helps it get distracted. Um, yeah, really frustrating sort of weird pattern. And I'm noticing these things. And so like, I, if I, sometimes I'll try to go to bed earlier and then I'll be in bed and just toss and turn. And it's like, what's the point? If I'm not going to sleep anyway, I might as well be up doing whatever. Um, but you know, if I stay up too late, there's the headache thing. And then there's also the fact that my family are morning people, which doesn't match with how I am. Um, so that is difficult. But yeah, no, so my psychologist suggested a sleep study. Apparently they're done all the time and it's actually easy to get into. So that's something I need to research. Um, one thing though is like apparently they're mostly done in a, you know, clinical setting and I don't sleep well in unfamiliar environments anyway, so they wouldn't get an accurate result, I think. Um, she said that there are ones that you can do at home. I don't know what that entails, but yeah, that'll be something I look into. Um, and I was really not in a good way. And, you know, like, like with YouTube, I can do the whole, like, being expressive, you know, I can get that going, but like, oh, I, I think I was in that monotone kind of way of speaking, um, not even trying to, uh, yeah. Um, so I, I was pretty bad. I was pretty upset. Um, tearing up a lot, needing a lot of tissues. Um, yeah, <laughs> probably not what she wanted to see as her last session with me. Um, but I am seeing the new psychologist um, in a week. So, you know, at least there's still someone keeping tabs on me and she'll have all the notes from the, this chick. And uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, that's a little bit of a ramble and something that I need to look at. Um, God, and I've got so many other things on a list of stuff to talk about, but yeah, so like I wanted to make videos, my brain is like, there's something else I could talk about and there's something else I need to, you know, just get down in some kind of record before I forget it, um, but I just, I, I can't make videos if I'm in a really bad state of mind, like sometimes I can, sometimes I can push through and so there are some videos where I'm crying, but sometimes it's just like I have no energy. I can't. I'm just using all my energy to get through the day and do the things that I need to do. Um, another update, I've finally left the studio, um, the Underground Art Space studio, um, packed everything, the last of my stuff up today. Um, so yeah, I'll do some kind of update on that once I've set up my new space, because I've also got to change some things in here and figure out where I want to put everything and how I want to set things up and, you know, I've been considering changing some of the ways that I do YouTube once I have a bit more space and, um, yeah, can just have things like I'm going to move my music stuff and um, there's a few things that are going to be a bit tricky though because that room is right next to traffic and some of the 
and glass on the window is actually broken and we've just put cardboard up there and lots of tape and never got around to fixing it properly because it works like <laughs> we are a bit dodgy like that sometimes um anyway so I can't really do the the like proper covers I know some people were still waiting for that Taylor Swift cover which I have not forgotten that is something that haunts me to this day which is funny because the song was going to be haunted but anyway um Wow, brain, you're making jokes that I wasn't even prepared for. Um, yeah, no, so I'd probably still be recording covers in here. I need to get things set up better though, because like one of the reasons I haven't done certain types of video is just because I'm so crowded with all my junk in here and, you know, like my music thing, I have to dig it out to be able to do any music. So I'm going to try and get some things more permanently set up. Um, but I could record some videos in that room because there is like a little space and... I just have like all these plans. Anyway, my brother, my other brother, so I've got the disabled brother who's the one who wakes me up. My other brother, he's the one who's moved out, so I've taken over his room. Um, with a few like asterisks because I will be sharing it for some other things, but um, mainly it'll be my extra room. Finally having some more space in my life. Um, anyway, so my other brother, the one who's moved out, uh, he, he, oh, uh, he, helped me move the things out of the studio but we had one last lunch at the Japanese place nearby and um we were talking and yeah it's just we were sort of like one of the topics was why am I screwed up and he's not and so we went over a few things like you know we did have kind of different childhoods but um and you know uh him being into sport easier for my parents to connect with um and then you know sport gives you certain social circles whereas I had different interests and never really got into that and then the girls school that I went to probably too early I probably would have been better off in the co-ed school but I don't know apparently I asked to go to the girls school and was able to get in um despite I'm pretty sure they had waiting lists back then but I don't know whatever um I, well, it doesn't change anything now. I went 13 years at an all-girls private Catholic school that turned out to not be that good, which is a general consensus in my wider family. My wider family, my extended family being the ones who were constantly sending their kids there. Um, the next generation, my generation, the ones who have had kids and not sending their kids to the school I went to. I assume it hasn't really changed, um, but I wouldn't know because I don't care enough to keep up. Anyway, um... Yeah, no, he went to the co-ed school, I went to this other school, and so some of the girls that I was hanging with were just not, not even close to my people. <laughs> anyway, um, and just stuff like that, but uh, a few topics came up that, like, he didn't even know about and was kind of like, that really happened to you? And I'm like, yes, this really happened to me. Um, one of them is when I became an atheist. Actually... The, the couple things that happened when I became an atheist and um, uh, one of them I've mentioned previously I think my grandma who was very conservative Catholic although she also had a weird thing for hair and her philosophy was basically if you're not a blonde female you should not have long hair um, anyone who is not a blonde female should basically have short hair she'd probably love my hair now <laughs> except she's dead but you know and I don't believe in heaven so I don't believe she's like watching me and spying on everything I do because if she was she'd probably be upset with a lot of stuff that <laughs> anyway never mind um yes my grandma very conservative catholic lady apart from her sitting in church judging everyone's hairstyles um she was pretty upset with me becoming an atheist she also blamed herself because she thought because I'd read a book she gave me like it was a fictional book but written by an atheist that that's the reason I became an atheist actually it's just because her talking about it made me realize that atheists exist I asked what atheists are was told that it was possible not to believe in God and was like that finally explains a lot of things um so I guess in a way it's kind of her fault I became an atheist but not by the route that she thought um I know I'm repeating things for people who've watched a lot of my stuff, but whatever. I've got too many videos, you probably wouldn't even know which one to find it on. Um, to the point, she, 
yeah, there was a long period of time where, like, she was not happy with me being an atheist because she thought I was going to go to hell. And um, there were, uh, there was at least, there's one incident I have very vivid um, memory of where she pulled me aside at a family thing and was, like, telling me I'm doomed with this really, like, convinced, concerned expression. Um, yeah, telling me I was doomed and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't even know how to react to that. And... At the time, I think I was just like, okay, but thinking about it, you're telling a kid who's done nothing wrong, um, especially at that point, like, because I always just kept to myself, like, what, when I had my first reconciliation, which is like your first confession, I had to make up a sin because I was just like, I literally can't think up, think of anything I've done. So basically, like, slightly twisting the truth there, that was probably my first sin, was lying to a priest just to come up with a sin. Anyway, um, yeah, so like, and I was a good kid. I, the, I guess that's the whole glass child thing is you, you have to be the good kid because you have a brother who is severely disabled. And so, you know, parents don't have time for you. You have to be the good kid. So I was the good kid. And then my grandma's telling me I'm going to hell for one, for just not believing in God. This was, I, I think, uh, like, you know, it was after my first reconciliation confession that I did the atheist thing, like, maybe three or four years or so. But, yeah, even, like, you know, those years later, I hadn't really done anything that I could think was a sin, and certainly not one of the sins that gets you straight to hell. Um, although, when I looked up the mortal sins last time, there's actually a lot in there. So, basically, like... I, I, maybe my source was incorrect, but it's like just anything you do would get you into hell. Anyway, um, from my childhood perspective, I hadn't done anything wrong and my grandma is telling me I'm going to hell and like pulling me aside and doing that whole thing. Um, and I told my brother that and he's like, are you serious that she actually did that to you? I'm like, yep, until um, we were in the city, this big cathedral in the middle of Sydney. Um, and she went to confession, and clearly the priest said something, and, uh, you know, after that she started saying, oh, it's okay, you know, as long as you're a good person, you'll be fine, and I'm like, yeah, so I just had to go through all that for no reason. Anyway, um, and then the other thing related to my atheism that my brother didn't know about is, um, you know, my parents were not happy with it. Um, dad, you know, obviously grew up Catholic because, you know, my grandma. I don't know if he's still Catholic, though. I don't know if he still believes in God. He sort of got very vague about it at some point, and now we don't hear very much, apart from, like, more social things related to the church. Um, I don't know if he actually... Anyway, so I may have corrupted my entire family. Although with mum's case, mum's Japanese, and the way Japanese treat religion is sort of like, um, like they, they tend to take from whatever they want. Like, you know, there's a lot of different religious stuff in Japan. And, um, yeah, they're, I think, is it called syncretism when you do that? So, like, they'll take what they like from Shinto, take what they like from Buddhism, take what they like from uh, Christianity. So, um, I think Shinto was, like, your birth and all the, the local um, gods and so on, you know, worship this rock, worship this tree, whatever. Uh, Christianity was like the marriage ceremony that got very popular. So quite like, you know, Shinto marriages still happen, but then, you know, some Japanese, despite not being Christian, are like, want one of those. And then uh, I think Shinto doesn't really have much to do with death. So they'd use Buddhism death ceremonies because, you know, it's got to fill the gap. And for Japanese, there's no problem with that. There's no problem with taking from different influences and putting it all together in their own Japanese way. So I think mum was mainly Catholic just to get me into what, you know, was perceived to be a good school at the time. Um, anyway, so yeah, they really wanted me to go to church and it was sort of probably, like I became an atheist in primary school, maybe about year five, so I would have been maybe about 10-ish. Um, but I think I didn't really come out about being atheist and start being resistant to church until about year seven. Uh, so 12 or 13 years old, um, and yeah, you know, going to a Catholic school and not wanting to be in church, it's uh, uh, another fun thing. Anyway, um, yeah, 
I don't remember when this happened, but at some point, like, I just outright stopped going to church, and uh, they got they got my brother, um, like, a fancy church jumper, like, you know, fancy clothes to wear to church, and they were sort of, like, they sort of, like, presented that to me as, like, you know, if you don't go to church, you don't get fancy clothes, which I was never into fancy clothes, so I don't know what they were going for there, but they tried to sort of, like, bribe or blackmail me into going to church in that kind of a way and I told my brother that and he's like that happened as well yes I have been through this kind of stuff um yeah so I think that kind of shows like there's a lot of differences between my upbringing and my brother um and that probably explains why psychologically we developed differently there um yeah, the, just the atheism stories, he's like, what? And then also, um, so like, you know, he didn't come out unscathed. He's he's generally well adjusted today, but he does have his own anxieties and so on. Um, but, and you know, also when he was younger, he did have, um, you know, some behavioral issues. And because he was acting out in class, he was um, sort of like, you know, talked to and, um, I'm not sure if he actually saw a counsellor or what, but um, he was telling me that like my grandpa, our grandpa actually went into the school one day because he, you know, had some behaviour thing. Um, I don't know whether, I don't remember whether that was junior or senior school, but um, yeah, no. So he actually had adults checking on him because he had the bad behaviour. But then here's me trying to be well behaved all the time and also I was academically performing quite well so everyone thought I was fine um but there was definitely a period there was two periods in high school actually like sort of around year eight nine um that I got that's when I first know for sure I was depressed I didn't know at the time because I didn't know what depression was at the time but in hindsight I was definitely depressed in that sort of year eight year nine and my grades did start to drop and then there was another period in year 11 where I just stopped giving a fuck about everything and my grades dropped again and at no point did the school ever think, gee, one of our top students is not performing all of a sudden. Maybe we should check and see if things are okay. Like, no one did that for me, um, which perhaps reflects partly on the school and partly on just the adults around me in general. And, um, yeah, so I didn't get any kind of intervention. Even, like, you know, I know back then mental health awareness wasn't as much of a thing, but if my brother got the help like at least some people knew some things and like you know when a kid who seems to be doing well suddenly doesn't do as well yeah I was still beating a lot of kids but I was clearly something was up and no one did anything no one thought maybe we should talk to this chick meanwhile I had a friend in school who was like crying in the bathroom and I would have to sit with her eventually I stopped doing this because I was just like I can't I was depressed myself but I wasn't showing it and there she is I'm having to comfort her because she's being public about it um yeah and I think she got sent to a counsellor because she was public about it I wasn't and the only sign that I was struggling was probably those grades and the fact that I was ridiculously quiet like it was really hard for them to like you know all my school reports are like you know oh yeah, she's great at all this stuff, but she's really quiet and should speak up more. The class would benefit from her contributions or something like that. They're all like that. <laughs> it would be kind of interesting to go and dig up my old school reports. I don't know if my parents kept them or what, but it would be kind of interesting because now I've learned to talk, but back then, nah, it's just like, why even bother? Like, yeah, I'm thinking stuff, but I, I, who cares? Um, and, you know, just... Anyway, so yeah, the just like talking to him about some of that stuff and how how some of our childhood differed, that was kind of an interesting thing today. Um, and wow, yeah, I ended up talking for quite a while. Like there's so much more I could talk about though, because there's, you know, then I'll remember another thing and another thing. But um, no, I, oh wow, it's just hitting midnight, so I think I'll stop this. Um, yeah, thank you to Solar Scribe Chronicler top patron in my cult. Thank you to my cult in general and anyone who's bought a shirt and I really need to get on top of stuff. But, sorry, um, I think I really need to set up the other room first and then get settled into it. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to get on to more of the different things that I want to do and maybe even vlog more regularly. Although like having to 
edit things and upload things properly takes time. So we'll see. I'm trying to manage all these different interests um, and trying to make it easier for me to do things other than YouTube because I've got this whole OBS thing set up now, which does make it easier for me to vlog because um, I'm minimizing any kind of editing. A lot of these just go up raw based on what I've done in OBS. Um, but like, you know, I need to set up my music so that I can do the same thing. Just sit down, turn it on, and there you go, I'm ready to go. Um, like, you know, I always have my computer on and my camera is here, so it's very easy to do YouTube. Not easy to do music because it's under all this stuff because I don't have space on this desk. And then having to hook things up and get the microphones and, oh. Yeah, and then set up art space so I can just do art like I was doing at the studio but without the pressure of paying rent. Um, and then have a spot to read. That's something I need to get set up and just, yeah, I'm juggling a lot of interests and, um, you know, also I've been doing some plant stuff outside. Wow, I really do way too much. <laughs> and then I get distracted and just watch YouTube for a little bit too long. Um, yeah, no, I'm trying to juggle a lot of things and it's just, uh, it's confusing. You know, my brain just won't settle in any particular direction. Anyway, so that's a little bit of a ramble and hopefully that'll you know, keep me going in terms of like, you know, my brain wanting to make videos and wanting to just say, hey, here's things that happened and here are some more thoughts that need to be recorded in some form before I forget. Um, yeah. Are you happy now, brain? Can we go to bed? <laughs> I think I need to turn up my air con though, T turn it on to a lower temperature because it's been so humid. Um, did I, oh, did I tell you why my little brother's probably not sleeping? Did I go through that? Um, Okay, we'll just, one more, one more thing. So I think that, I mean, my parents clearly um, not great with the emotional intelligence. And I also noticed like with my dog, for example, they're not really good at picking up on his body language. Um, I'm clearly much more in tune with his body language and so on. But I think I might also have a little bit of that, like working out nonverbal creatures in general, um, because you know, sometimes my parents just miss some obvious things. So, you know, my little brother's been waking me up lately. Um, but last night, last night I solved the problem. And um, what happened is I'm just like doing my thing at my computer. Around 11.30 at night, I hear him making noises. Very unusual this time of night. He's usually zonked. But um, in Sydney, uh, we finally got the hot weather, you know, we finally hit 30 degrees and then it sort of hovered around there. Um, but it's also been humid the last few days, like gross. I don't want to go outside the house. I don't want to go outside the house most of the time anyway, but like, yeah. Um, and so 1130, he makes noise. I go to check on him because, you know, usually the only time you would hear a noise like that in the middle of the night is when he's having a seizure. Um, and in that case, you know, you need to make sure he's safe and all that. Um, but no, I go in and he's sort of like all twisted up in his blanket and, you know, he's been tossing and turning clearly. And when I turned on the light, he sort of looks up and is like, I'm stuck in this blanket. And so I, you know, untangled him, laid him out, put the blanket back on and he's like, this is better. Um, but it was so, what, the, what struck me when I went in there is just how hot and humid it was in his room. Who can sleep with that? I couldn't sleep with that. And what just... Like, I didn't realize that my parents weren't turning on his aircon. Like, isn't that the point? Isn't that why we've got aircon in the bedrooms? Because I wasn't sleeping and he's, he doesn't sweat properly and um, all this kind of stuff. And like a few nights back, there was a storm. My parents had just gone up to get ready for bed and my dog was freaking out. And so he wanted to say goodnight to mum because dad had come to say goodnight to him. I finally trained dad to come and say goodnight to my dog but mum often doesn't, and so he wanted to go upstairs and say goodnight to mum because there's a storm, and it's scary, he wants reassurance. Um, and so I took him up there, and when I went in, um, they had their aircon on. And it's like, guys, if you can't sleep without turning on the aircon yourselves, what about this non-verbal kid who has problems with sweating? He's a little bit sort of getting his weights going up, which is not really a good thing for him, especially in terms of medication. Um, and, you know, he's male as well. Males tend to sweat more anyway. And so he's got all these medical issues. I'm like, if you can't sleep without putting the air con on before bed, what do you think this kid? He's also got a fan in his room. He had a fan before he got we got the air con. And they just... 
Oh my god. So um, after I flattened him out, put his blanket back on, I turned on his aircon, um, and it was on a pretty low setting because I'm like, I need to drop the temperature in this room fast. And I put it on sleep mode for two hours. Um, stayed up a little bit longer. An hour later, I'm ready to go to bed myself. And I thought, I'll check on him just to make sure it's not too cold in there. Open the door and just had the light on my phone so I didn't wake him up that way. As I opened the door, the hugest snore. <laughs> It was fast asleep and he had not tossed and turned. He was still in that flat position I'd left him with the blanket. Absolutely dead fast asleep. And uh, yeah, so I solved his sleep problem. Had the little, um, we've got this little door snake in the shape of a dog that I put at the bottom of his um, his uh, door. Just obviously it's a door snake. Why can't you think of the word door? Um, I, I originally started doing that because as we were going to summer and the sun was like getting waking up earlier and earlier I think he was looking underneath and sort of seeing the light coming in and you know trying to work out if anyone's walking by so I put the door snake there so that he can't see anything and it's a bit darker but now the sun is finally like going back the other way it's coming going later and later so that's less of an issue but the cold air comes out through the bottom of the door so I put the door snake there to keep the cool air in anyway basically air con that's all he needed and he was fast asleep, and instead of waking up at 5.30 or earlier, this morning I didn't hear him until after 6, maybe 6.30ish. Success! Because I was paying attention to what he probably needed, and, you know, having some empathy in that sense. Is that empathy, um, you know, just sort of understanding, oh my god, this kid can't sleep because they didn't put the air con. I didn't realise they weren't doing that, so... Um, I've checked on him tonight, like I sent them messages, I even did a, took a photo of the remote and showed them which settings you press to get all this to happen. Um, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> so they put the aircon on and they've also put the fan on, the fan will go all night, but I just went in and it, tonight is the hottest night in a while and like really muggy and gross, so I, um, put it on you know, I went back in, it was already off, and I'm like, nah, this needs to go cooler. So I put it on for another two hours for him, and uh, hopefully he won't wake me in the morning, and hopefully I've solved this problem until the next problem comes up, because I feel like I'm constantly problem-solving his sleep. Oh, dear. You know, like, getting getting them, like, I finally, they, they've done well to get into the pattern of putting him to bed later. They finally realised that that is a thing that needs to be done, and... Um, they put a lot less pressure on me because I think they realize that if I sleep, I do better. Um, I can compartmentalize things, but if I don't sleep, that all breaks down and I go straight back into like badly depressed. So I don't know if I'm doing okay and then have moments of depression or if I'm just like constantly depressed but able to block it out somehow. Because, um, you know, anytime anything goes wrong, either Centrelink or like sleep, those are the main ones lately everything comes back so fast that it's like, I can't have just suddenly got depressed. This must be something that's going along that I can just distract myself from. I don't know. Anyway, that's more thoughts. Um, yeah, just my parents, they're kind of silly sometimes like that. And I have to point out these things and, um, yeah. Stuff and things. Solar Scribe Chronicler, shout out. Um, I, I h hope that, like, my latest postcard made it okay or is, like, on the way okay. Um, let me know about that. Um, yeah, I want to make more t-shirts. That's why I mentioned the t-shirt cult. Um, anyway, no, look, I'm finally wearing some tea turtle. And I need to stop rambling because it's past midnight. Okay, go to bed. Go to bed and do upload this in the morning, okay? Right now is not the time. Cool. Bye. I'm going to bed. See ya whenever.